I'll have it massaged, but I won't have it lifted. What's that? My feet. I'm not going to waste any more time. I've already spent enough money on it to restore the battlefields of France. Daniel, it seems to be giving Helen Blake quite a rush. Well, she's been hanging around my daughter Sylvia, best so. Yeah? Tells me his father's one of the biggest cattle owners in his part of the country. True enough. That's got nothing to do with him. Why not? His father disowned him three years ago. Oh, Sylvia. Yes? You'll be losing your handsome boyfriend if you don't look out. She can have him. Have him? She's got him. This party is stupid anyway. Good evening. Is your father here tonight, Helen? No, he's not, Mr. Wheelock. He wasn't feeling very well, so I made him stay home and go to bed. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, how perfectly divine. Yes. Yeah. It reminds me of those wonderful nights on the ranch. When we sleep out. My father has many cattle, you know, and sometimes when I was a kid, I would ride out to the cowboys and sleep as they did, with nothing but a blanket as a pillow beneath the stars. It would be so wonderful if we could sleep that way sometime. With the cowboys? Wouldn't it be crowded? Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, yes, I got it. Helen, I love you. Will you marry me? If you don't like me, you, you can get a divorce. Now, that's an idea. Sure, it's a grand idea. Will you? Not now. I want to look at the river. You're so practical. Oh, I have to be with you. You just want to make me unhappy. Won't you ever marry me? Maybe someday I will. You will. I know you will. I'll make you marry me. <laughs> Unhand that woman. <laughs> I asked her to marry me, and she just makes jokes. Ah, <laughs> oh, go on, marry the poor guy. Don't be selfish, Helen. Well, then how did this rumor get started, anyway? Well, yes, Mr. Barry. You spare me a What are you going to do, murder me? Helen, I'm going to be disagreeable. I, I can't stand by and watch you get entangled with this Dagnoli without saying something. Oh, no, Mr. Nerd, I know that you mean well, but I assure you that... If you can take care of yourself, as I know, that's what they all say. You mustn't forget, I have a daughter of my own. Well, since you have a daughter of your own, I should think that... No. No, I beg your pardon. Right. You know I'm crazy about you. Why do you do nothing but humiliate me? I don't. What's the matter? Am I not free? You wouldn't have met her if it hadn't been for me. You wouldn't have met anyone. Well, of course, I'm grateful. If I hadn't taken you around when you first came to New York, why, why everybody you know you met through me. But certainly a man has got a right to choose his own wife. Wife? Yes. You're going to ask Helen Blake to marry you? I did already. Yesterday I asked her three times, and tonight up to now I asked her 11 times. Then I'm through with you. Forever. Oh, no, you're not. Not forever. Just for a little while. I may as well tell you, Mr. Merritt, if you keep on saying things against him, you'll only drive us closer together. What does your father say? My father's perfect. Meaning that he lets you do as you please. All right, Helen, I thought it my duty to warn you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Madge, I did the same. At least I played some black cards. Mother, I'm going to bed. Going to bed? Leave your own party? Well, I don't like it. I don't like it either, but you don't see me going to bed, do you? Oh, Madge, I just have a save. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night darling. Poor child, she's so high strung. 
When does Sylvia's fiancé arrive? Oh, um, which one? Oh, of course, Lord Danvers. He's the only one that ever really counted. Uh, in the spring. Appropriate, don't you think? What with the robins and everything. Where's Helen? I don't know. We're going to scram. The hostess has turned sour. Come on, I've sent for the car. So where do we go? I know, the Club Albany. Well, isn't that where that man was killed? He wasn't killed. No? They shot him, stabbed him, and threw tables at him, but he wasn't killed. Ooh, just injured. Mm, that's where we want to go, a nice, safe place. <laughs> <laughs> You got too many clothes on. Uh, good evening, Mr. Donnelly. Good evening, sir. Send the phone, please. Yes, sir. People have reason. Come in. That boy knows his way around. The head waiter knows him. He knows me, too, but we're not speaking. Oh, look, there's a table over there. Why can't we have that one? That's reserved. Well, who's it reserved for? For gorillas. That's the shooting section. The suckers sit over here. Halloween? No, uh, Thanksgiving. We always dress up for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving? Yeah. Oh, I gotta go home. Come on, Helen. Liz's on. Probably wants to sign a check. He already owes about 300 bucks. Where is he? On the floor.
we go home? No, sir. There'll be plenty of time for that after we're married. See, let's get married. What? See, Ellen. Huh? Let's get married. Who, you and me? No, you and Frank or Frank and me or Dorothy. I don't care. I just want to get married. Oh, come on, Helen. Let's get married. I will if you will. Oh, you wouldn't really. I would, too. I'm tired of always riding around in cars. <laughs> She's afraid. Why well, afraid of what? What people will say. I'm never afraid of what people say. All right, then, let's see you do it. I will. Oh, say, now, wait a minute. Oh, come on, Helen. Look on back. Oh, I'm back in here. You are, too. <laughs> All right, I'll do what anybody else will do. <laughs> Hooray! around all the time gets on a fellow's nerves. Darling, you don't have to wait if you don't want to. Yes? Who is it, Leroy? No, sir. It's a COD for you, sir. Oh, what is it? Mr. Dagnoli? Yes? One high stock hat. Well, why didn't you leave it? It's COD, sir. COD? What nonsense. Give it him at once. What do you think? I'm going to run away from a house like this? No, sir. Well, then, get out of here. And if I hear any more of your COD nonsense, I'll remove my thread elsewhere. Yes, sir. Well, then, get out of here. Quick. Quick, quick, quick. Going somewhere? Why, Mr. Merritt, this is an unexpected pleasure. Oh, is it? Where's Helen? Uh, in the living room. Come on, I'll show you to her. Young man, I was in this house before you were born. I didn't expect to see you. Do come and sit down. Look, we're in a uh, terrible mess here. Thanks. I've been waiting for our lawyer. Yes, I came in his place, Helen. 
Oh, I know. He, he told me that you had to be bothered a lot about the estate. Oh, that's all right. But I felt that I should be the one to, uh, well, explain the situation to you. Situation? I may as well tell you, Helen. Your father left nothing. After the estate is liquidated, you won't have a penny. But that's impossible. This house, his investment, there must be something. No, I've been carrying your father for the past eight months. You see, after the market turned, he was in a pretty bad way. A lot of unfortunate investments, a large loan from our company. You mean, you mean everything's gone? Everything. Well, what am I going to do about these bills? Well, the estate will take care of those. After that... Rather a shock. Of course, Frank can support me all right. With what? Oh, Frank has an income. I think you're missing Paul. No, no, no. No, he told me that. You see, his father's one of the, well, richest, the richest cattle, cattle owners in his part of the country. Well, what's wrong with that? Ask him. Well, I, I don't know what there is to ask him, but I may as well tell him what's happened. Frank. Yes. Frank. Um, you know Mr. Merritt is one of the executives. He's come to tell me about the will. Mm -hmm. There isn't going to be anything. What does that mean? There won't be any money. No money? You're kidding. No. Oh, what a terrible, not a fine thing. What a pleasant surprise. Nothing. Now, how do you think we're going to live? Well, with, with your money, we can get along. My money? My money? <laughs> well, if you want to know, I haven't got any. My father's a miser, and he wouldn't give me a cent. Well, that's all right. We, we, we won't talk about it now. We'll find some other way. Yes, that's big talk. What way? What way? <laughs> I begin to see now a whole lot of things I didn't know before. Passing yourself off as a rich girl, huh? Oh, Frank, I, I can't sure. believe that you... Marry me for my money. Someone tells you my father's rich, but I haven't got a cent. And that's where you get left. What a marriage this is now to be. I was drunk. But that's what I was, and so are you. Stop it. Well... I'm sober now, and I'd rather have my headache all alone. Frank, Frank, where are you going? Oh, I'm going far away from you and your bills. Far away to someone who treat me better. Poor child, I... Oh, Dill. So, don't make it worse by pitying me. You warned me, didn't you? Oh, it's all right. I'll live through it. Well, now, if there's anything oh, that no. I... Oh, no. No, there's nothing. I know exactly where I stand. I'm broke, and I've got to do something about it. Well, of course, you'll be allowed to live here in the house for a few weeks. I don't want to. Well, we'll talk that over in a day or so. Goodbye, dear. Mr. Merritt. Yes, Helen? There is one thing you can do for me. And what is it? I want a job. A job? All right. Coast male parmesan, Savoy scallop, and uh, breast of quail look colors. Being an Englishman, they probably want roast beef. Potatoes of gratin. <coughs> Shut up, PJ. And summer squash. Oh, that reminds me. Augie hasn't paid his dues at the racket club. Make a note of that, will you? I sent the check yesterday. Oh, well, that's good. And now, uh, when the newspapers begin to call. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, just a moment. 
If Mrs. Tillotson, she wants to know whether you'll dine with her on Thursday next. Mm. She's a poisonous old cat and I'll be bored to death, but I suppose I ought to. Mrs. Merritt says she'll be delighted to come. Oh, I didn't say this is the kind. Yes? Oh, no. No, no, not officially, Mrs. Tillotson. Goodbye. Mm. She wanted to know whether the dinner for Lord Dancer was an engagement dinner. Your know, gossips probably heard that we financed Lord Dancer's oil wells in Turkestan. You know where the rugs come from? And now she thinks she's marrying Sylvia for her money. Well, I suppose I may as well stay on good terms with her to keep her from telling everybody. Not that there's any secret about it. If there's oil on the ground, we had a perfect right to buy it. With no intention of buying a husband for Sylvia. Lord Dancer's always been crazy about Sylvia. Always. And now let's get on with these invitations. <laughs> Mr. Marlowe. Who wants to know? I do. We don't need any waiters. Do I look like a waiter? Do I? Do I? Hey! Who are you poking? Sit down. You're a tough little mug, ain't you? Sorry, Mr. Dagnoli. How are you? Hello, Dan. Some of the kids that work around here get a little too big for their shoes. I didn't know you knew them, boss. Well, next time, find out. That's all right. Come on in, Mr. Dagnoli. Come on. Come on, girls, why not? Sit down. Thanks. Where you been? Oh, all over. Broke. Yes, that time here. You remember you said my dancing was... Uh... Oh, oh, your dancing is divine. Simply divine. Oh, well, I wouldn't put it that way. You don't have to. That's the way I put it. I see. And I, I can sing very nice tune. I thought you might... Uh... Do you still think you can give me that job? I guess I could. Now, how much money do you pay? That's up to you. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I quite understand. All right. I'll make it clear to you. Accept. Reject. Well, that's Mrs. Whitley. Shall I give any reason? Mrs. Alton Merritt doesn't have to give reasons. Good morning. Oh, hello, Helen. Hello. How is the social secretary getting on? Hello, Mother. You realize we've been waiting for you? Well, you'd be waiting still if Lottie hadn't socked me in the face with a wet towel. I might as well have a freshman girl sergeant for a mate. It's worth the sacrifice of rising. Do you know how much money you'd have lost if you hadn't taken up those stock rates? Don't try to give me a lesson in business. I've, I've got the jitters. Uh, show them where to sign the papers, Helen. Right here. Who can off my shin? Bring them over here. Here what a signature. Not at my best, Mother. What time did you get in last night? About three, I guess. Where'd you go? Suburbanate. That's where you used to be such a hot shot, isn't it, Helen? Well, I used to go there. Did you have a good time? Rotten. It's about time you started getting some rest. So you look like something when Lord Danforth arrived. Oh, he liked my looks in London. That's all right. It was a foggy. Oh, well, this head of mine, I don't think I'll stay here and listen to a discussion of my shortcomings. Oh, uh, Helen, bring me that paper, will you? Thank you. You're feeling better now, huh? It's a great job. I should make a lot of money. You will, if you play it right. I'm going to see about getting you a room in the hotel upstairs. It's connected with the club, so it'll be convenient. You get busy and call up some of those swell dames you know. That's right. Oh, Mr. Danioli, just one other thing. Don't try to put anything over on me.
Is that right? That will do for the present. Mr. Lake. Yes? The chef is having trouble with the caterer. Well, I'll attend to him later. And I want to check that new linen with you too, Miller. Yes. Have the rest of the flowers come? They're bringing them in the back now. I had another argument about the price. $3,100 seems a lot to pay for roses. Oh, I don't know. I always say, if you're going to do things in a big way, you have to spend money. A telegram for Mrs. Merritt, Miss Blake. Thank you. Oh. Are you almost in slumberland, Mrs. Merritt? Oh, don't even talk. You, Helen? Yes, Mrs. Merritt. There's a telegram from Sylvia. She's gone to Princeton for the baseball game, and she'll be about an hour late for dinner. There. That's sheer perversity. That's what I get for insisting that she be here on time. What are you going to do about dinner? Oh, dear. We'll sit down at 9.15 the latest. Sylvia or no Sylvia. But you'll be searching a table, do you mind? Of course I mind. Well, at least some of those fool women I've invited to dinner will be sure to mind. Oh, dear. Well, there's only one thing for it, Helen. You'll have to take her place and just slip away when she arrives. Certainly, Oh. I suppose I may as well have that pounding you wanted to give me, Helma. No chance for a nap now. Me? No. Oh, you don't? No. But I'm crazy about you. Who do you love? That guy you're going to marry? I should say not. I'm not even crazy about him. <laughs> you you want a title? Is that it? No, not that. You make a very distinguished husband, title or no title. See? I'm not in love with either of you. But I'm crazy about you. Lord Danforth. Oh, my dear boy, I'm so glad to see you. How are you, Paul? Mm -hmm. I'm late. I'm terribly apologetic. I didn't realize about your traffic. Oh, don't let that worry you. Sylvia's even later. Poor child, she'd be so distressed. I know she's frightfully upset at not being able to get here. Oh, um, you know the Marquis Don Jacques, I believe. But of course, we're cousins. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Paul. How are you, Anne? Yeah. Uh, I think you're sitting there, Lord Dancer, right there at the other end. Sit down. I put you next to me. Oh. Now, I wonder who... <laughs> goodbye, baby. Uh, goodbye, darling. Oh, wait a minute. Who won the game? Here it is in the paper. Princeton, 8 to 6. 8 to 6, 8, eight to 6. I got it. Uh, goodbye, darling. I'll call you tomorrow. Goodbye, darling. No, I, I'm just one of the hired hands. Isn't that a shock? <laughs> I'm Helen Blake, Mrs. Merritt's secretary. Now, how was I to know? I always thought the secretaries wore horn-rimmed glasses. But I have some. But I have really, but they're awfully unbecoming. Then I think you should wear them. Oh, well, how should I take that? As a compliment. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm confused. You see, I've an idea. I've seen you before somewhere. You have? I have. In London, three years ago, I was there with my parents. You were at a tea, but I didn't meet you. Lady Fastest had just gone to bring you over, and then you had to leave. Cricket or some funny thing. I remember. And to think that if I hadn't had to run away like that, perhaps we'd have been friends by now. No. We'd have just met formally, and then I fear you'd have forgotten me. I fear not. Oh, I've never seen such a stupid girl. Hurry up! Oh. Get out of my way. No, no. You and I get on pretty well together. I laugh at your jokes, and you laugh at mine. Well, I'll tell you something terribly funny. 
I thought you were going to be rather stiff and pompous. Uh, there's not much chance of that in my family. Anybody caught trying to be pompous is immediately kicked downstairs. Oh, I think that's lovely. You do? Well, of course I do. Now, wait a minute. We must go into this business. There's an implication there that needs investigating. Hello, everybody. Hello, Paul. There she is. Thanks for being so patient, Tom. Let his change, Helen. Well, who won the game this afternoon? Princeton, eight to six. It was perfectly wonderful. One of the most divine plays I've ever seen. But I'll tell you about that some other time. You're a bad girl. I don't want anybody to scold me now. I've got to talk to Paul. Well, have you missed me? No end. How's your father? Hanging on. What do you think of our tall building? Marvelous. And the New York Harbor? Marvelous. And New York? Marvelous. And what do you think of American women? I can't find words to describe them. I've been looking for you. You have, I'm sorry. To continue our little talk about being stiff and pompous. Lord Asset, do you mind going back and joining the others? Why? Mrs. Merritt will think it very strange, my keeping you out here. Oh, you're not keeping me. No, they're perfectly all right. Besides, I have some things I want to tell you. First, I think you're a perfectly terrible social secretary. <laughs> Lucky you're not my boss. Because although you're, you're a very charming secretary, there's nothing social about you. At crit critical moments, you disappear, can't be found anywhere. You really understand, don't you? No, I don't. I'm trying desperately hard to get it through my head. Oh, good heavens, man. You're the party. I mustn't take up your time. Then what are you here for? To entertain undesirable men? I'm undesirable. Awfully. I should be looked after. Men shun me, and young girls run from me, screaming for their mothers. Oh, hello. Hello. Yeah. Here you are, having a good time. I've been trying to persuade Miss Blake to come inside and, and brighten our lives. How about a little drinky? Well, if that isn't a thought. Helen, will you attend to it? Certainly. And Helen? Yes? Only two. Good evening, my lord. Good evening, Brown. Miss Sylvia ready yet? Miss Sylvia's not home. Not home? Oh. Did she leave any word? No, my lord. And Mr. and Mrs. Merritt have gone to the Woodrows. Oh. Well, very well. I'll wait, I'll wait in here. Tell you a little insurance. Oh, this is fine. <laughs> How, do you do? How do you do? You're the very person I've been looking for. Well, I want to consult you on a very fine point of social etiquette. What is it? If a man calls three times on a lady and she's never in, hasn't he a perfect right to ask another lady to help him out? Oh, I should think so. Why? Because I want you to dine with me this evening. I'm dying for lack of food and pleasant company. <laughs> now, now, what else were you going to do? Nothing important, was it? No, I was just going to the library. Oh, that can wait. The library will always be there. I'll write a note to Sylvia. Now, please be nice and don't argue. 
All right. I have to change my dress. Do you mind waiting? Waiting? I love it. <laughs> Where's my bracelet? Huh? My bracelet? I don't know. Where did you leave it? Right here. You must have left it home. I told you I left it right here. Well, you can see it isn't there. Yes. Yes, I can see it isn't there. Well, anyway, I have my hat. That's one thing you can't use. So we have become friends, haven't we? Really? I hope so. You know, I was just thinking, it isn't how long you know a person that makes you understand him. Oh, oh, oh. we've known each other for quite a while. Yes, counting three years ago when we didn't meet that time. I'm your friend. I want you to be mine. I always will be. That's no end of comfort to me. I mean that, darling. Darling? Yes. I suppose so. An English lord shouldn't call an upper servant, darling. Oh, it's always done in fairy tales. <laughs> That's why they're called fairy tales. Once upon a time... Oh, you're going to tell me one? If you don't mind. I'd love it. Once upon a time, there was an English lord, and he fell in love with a very rich American girl. And the English lord, with a terrific number of uncles and cousins and step-cousins, all very poor, whose one possession was a group of undeveloped oil fields. And the rich American girl's father put $50 million into those oil fields. And the uncles and cousins scraped together their last pennies and bought stock, and it went up. And there was great rejoicing throughout the land. And they all lived happily ever after. No. No. They became very miserable. One of them did. I'm sorry. What he had thought was love passed and left behind indifference. But it was too late. He and his family had accepted favors which made the obligations unbreakable. And then, as they say in the books, he met the one girl. Did he? And he knew that with her, everything would have been different. No. No, it wouldn't have. It would. I know it would. I feel it would. Yes, I feel it would, too. Don't you think we'd better go home? No. No, let's, let's go somewhere else. Let's go and dance. Just this one night together. You can't deny me that. Oh, I can't deny myself that, I guess. Oh, thank you. But let's get back where we started and be friends. We understand each other. That's beautiful. I'm glad we do. And that's the end of it. This is our first evening alone together, and our last, so we mustn't spoil it, must we? No, my dear. Promise? I promise.
Well, folks, that passionate man is going to sing for us again. Mm, isn't that the goodie? Now sit down and keep quiet. I don't want to catch anyone making noise during this number. Naughty, naughty. Lay him, Pancho. the type? No. Oh, you're always liable to find them in places like this. What do you mean? Well, it's quite simple. They make themselves attractive to elderly, lonesome women. They dance with them, and in a short time, a necklace or a bracelet is missing.
Who's there? Daly. What do you want? The chief wants to see you. Hey, Frank. Yes? If anything happens to you, can I have your watch? Just a gigolo everywhere I go. <laughs> Just a gigolo. Do you want me? Yeah. Sit down. You've been playing the races a lot, haven't you? Huh? Me? What do you know about it? I've been wondering where it all went to. What do you mean? These letters are from women that have lost jewelry in my place. I haven't seen half of it. How can that be? I've turned in everything. Honest, I wouldn't. Now, listen, you jig. Don't you lie to me or they'll find you floating in the East River. We want all of us, see? Now, you dig up the 12 grand you owe us this afternoon. I'll give you till 4 o'clock and not one minute later. You understand? All right. On your way. What do you want? I want to talk to you. I told you I was through with you. Yes. But I'm not through with you. I can't get you any more money. My, my father won't give it to well, me. I'll never bother you again. Honest, I won't. But I've got, I've got to have it this time. Don't do anything foolish. You don't want anybody in here. I could tell plenty. Now listen. I've got to have $12,000. I can't get it. I and if you, you don't get it, I'll call up your father and your Englishman and maybe the papers and tell them what a nice, sweet bride you are. You understand? But Frank, I'll give you just an hour to bring that money up to my room. Just one hour. doing here? You better mind your own business, Helen Blake. Is he the man you've been seeing? Is he? Yes. Helen, I didn't know you cared. I didn't have any I idea. I don't care. He wants money, is that it? Yes. 
Listen, Helen, you could help me. I could. Oh, I, I know we quarrel a little, but we're awfully good friends, really. Oh, yes, aren't we? You, you don't want to see my mother and father disgrace you? No, I don't, but I'd like awfully well to see you disgrace. If, if I don't bring $12,000 to his room at the Hotel Albany, he'll make a scandal. You found the papers. You're not thinking of doing it, are you? I, I don't know what to do. But listen, if you get him anything, he'll go on bleeding you for the rest of your life. Why don't you talk to him, Helen? He's afraid of you. Why don't you go and talk to him? Oh, you could. Well, you could make him do it. Oh, you stop it. I, I don't know why I'm in this room at all. You got yourself in this mess. Why should I care? You've been rotten to me, Sophie. You know you have. You're getting the results of your selfishness now, and you're crying for help. Well, let them stop the wedding. If you want to know the truth, I love Paul, and I hate to see him married to you. Don't you want to call him? But he's mighty like a rose. Oh, uh, Helen. Have they got the chairs all set? Yes, everything's ready, Mrs. Oh, that's good. Oh, my dear girl. You don't know what it means to be a mother. No, no, of course you don't, naturally. Hey, where are you going in such a hurry? Oh, I, I can't stop now, Paul. Can I do anything? No, thanks. Do you know what he and I are going to do when this wedding is over? Something we've wanted to do all of our lives, just by ourselves. A trip to the Far East. <laughs> it may mean a little romantic something. I don't know. Just get these men away from their business. And Helen, you will look after Sylvia, won't you? I. Oh, I know, dear. You've been through a lot with her, I realize that, but... but you're the only one I can trust. You won't fail me, will you? No. No, I won't fail you. Well, I knew that getting a daughter married was an expensive proposition, but I'm getting more than I bargained for. Oh, what do you mean? Well, I've just had to give Sylvia a second big check for the past week. 10,000 this time, and she actually wanted more. <laughs> the sweet child. get it all. Father's suspicious. What? Listen, Frank. There's ten thousand dollars. I'll give you the rest after I'm married if you promise never to bother me again. Oh, what good will that do? I need it now. Frank, I... You want to see me killed, is that it? Frank, you know that's not true. All right. I'll take that necklace. What? No, you can't. They'd miss it. Give it to me. I won't. I, I can't. I'll take it then. Frank! Hey. 
And you'll wait here until I'll come back. Oh, Frank, please. Come on. Frank, stop. Listen. That's it. Get out. Afternoon. Would you take Muriel out for her walk? Sure thing. What time is it? About a quarter after four. Well, then bring her back about 4.30. Okay. Mr. Lyons. Hey, dig Mr. Lyons. Mr. Lyons. What's the number of Mr. Frank Dagnoli's room? 802. May I go up? They usually do. I'll go. Oh, this is Lori Corbett's office. Somebody spilled something in front of the elevator door. Tell her to wipe it up. Is that you? I want to speak to Miss Blake. Oh, what? Well, where could she go? Where, where could she be? Who is it? It's Helen. Brown, well, never mind. What's the matter? Close the door. Anybody in there? The key is in the inside. I 
guess I'd better get the house detective. I'll get him. Over in there, I'm gonna bring it down. Sylvia, listen. The minute I open it, you strip out through the other door and join the crowd. You understand? All right, go on. Oh. All right, I'll open it. Now, now, you people can't come in. Now, you'll have to keep up, that's all. Just, you can't let anybody go in there. There he is. Ring, seven, three, one hundred. Hello. Yeah, this is a house detective, the Hotel Albany. A man has just been shot. I'm holding a woman here. Okay. Well, we're going to wait for the policeman, so you might as well sit down.
Honey, I gotta see him. Take it away. Take it away. Does the mayor know that the secretary is being held for murder? What are you talking about? Helen Blake. Helen Blake? Sure. The cops are giving her the third degree now. They've got her at the Hotel Albany. Come on, get it. Oh, go away. No. You'll only make things worse. I've got to help you, darling. You know that. Oh, please go away. Won't you tell me? I'll tell him nothing. That dress. What? Where did you put it on? I don't know what you're talking about. I'll very soon find out. Where are you going? Get you out of here. Sylvia, I must speak to you at once. I don't want to talk to anyone. I think, sir, she might explain your sudden disappearance, Paul. Don't you know that Helen is under arrest? I don't see that there's any reason for your running off without a word. Of course, it may be the thing to do among title people. I'm sure I don't know. Sylvia, how did Helen come to be wearing your dress? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't like being questioned. I'm very nervous and upset. I'm sorry, but I have to question you. Sylvia says she doesn't want to It doesn't to make questions. any difference about Sylvia at this I moment. think it does, sir. How did Helen come to be wearing your dress? She borrowed it, I suppose. Leave me alone. You had it on when you, when you left here this afternoon. Why, well, you're crazy. I didn't. Why, oh, you're crazy. Stop I... You can see that Sylvie is in no condition. Good heavens, man. Don't you know there's an innocent girl accused of murder? Will you tell me what that has to do with my daughter? Yes, I will tell you, sir. Helen's being a scapegoat for your daughter. She's taking the blame to cover her up. Why, it isn't true. Sylvia. The dress that Sylvia wore when she hurried out of here this afternoon is the one that is covered with blood. Stop it. You're the one that killed that man. I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. I didn't. He just came in the room and fell against me. Sylvia, what are you saying? <laughs> what are you talking about, my child? Then Helen came. <laughs> Helen came and took your face. Yes, but I didn't kill him. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Helen, <laughs> your face. <Yes. laughs> oh, don't you sound like Nettie? Me, the police commissioner. There's supposed to be six of you boys. Where's the other one? There's only five of us work here, sir. Don't lie to me. Now come through, I'll smack the life out of you. Yes, I'll attend to it right away. Yes, Mr. Commissioner. Yes, sir. Where's Mitch? I've just told everything, you boys. Because he took my dog. How do you know what time it was when he took the dog? I just finished telling Where's you. Mitch? Yeah. I just heard from the commissioner. What's the matter? I can murder phoned the commissioner. Said his daughter was the one who was in that room. A Blake gal changed dresses with her. Mm, I've been married to daughter, huh? Yeah. Listen now, where's... Oh, there you are. We got Daly. You what? Daly? He locked himself in the room on the top floor. I seen the doors running down the That's hall. That's all I want to know. Come on. I followed him up. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Open Come on now. Come on. Open the door. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Sylvia has something to say to you, Helen. Go on. Go on. 
I apologize. That's nothing else. Helen, I hope you'll forgive me. Well, of course I'll forgive you. And, and while you're about Oh, no, it, please don't make her say any more. Please don't. All right. Now go in there and start sending back your wedding presents. And then go upstairs and begin packing for our trip to the Far East. But I don't like the Far East. I know you don't. That's why you're going. I didn't realize when you promised to be my friend that evening how soon you'd have a chance to prove that you meant it. Thank you. For what? Oh, not for getting me free. I wasn't thinking of that. For your faith in me, for... for helping me when I seem to least deserve it. It never occurred to me for a moment you could do anything wrong. I just knew instinctively it wasn't part of you. I hope I didn't get you into a lot of trouble. None, my dear. They're being awfully decent about it. No revenge. They really understand. Everything's all right. <laughs> and that's why you still feel the same. We might have a try at that old foolishness called living happily ever after. Well, it's a little sudden. Well, it's spring, naturally. I was telling Argy just a moment ago. While we're in the Far East, I shouldn't be at all surprised. <laughs> There's a lot that's going on in the Far West. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Leave you alone, no. let, let me tell you something, Uncle. Uncle, you are going to give me all the whole love. The whole love that I've been working for, you are going to give it to me now. If you don't want to give me the love, then pay me back all the whole money. All the whole money that I spent on you, you are going to give it back to me. The money I spent before you traveled to wherever you traveled to. Anywhere you traveled to, I don't know, only God knows. You are going to refund me all those money. Now! If you don't refund me this money now, trouble is going to happen. And I'm going to give you the trouble in quantum. So now, choose one. Is that why you give me the money or you give me the love? Hey, hey, hey. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? What the fuck is wrong with you? Come, let me tell you. You see, the white law supervisor that brought all the way from America has hot temper. And I don't want any problem. Do you understand me? Just, just get out of here and I begin to go. Look. Nkoli, ever since you traveled and you came back, it has been year, man. Year, man. Nkoli, people go to abroad and come back with a lot of goodies. Luxurious car, container, ship, big, big things. You came from abroad, all you came back with is year, man. Year, man. Look! If you're not going, if you don't follow me to my house now, let us, let me continue from where I stopped. Follow me to my house and drop this year man here. Yes, now, who, let who, me continue from where I stopped. My, my, I, oh my, my, my wife. Huh? Who is, who is, who is talking? Who is this man? Uncle, you didn't tell me you people now have get man. Huh? When did you employ this get man? Huh? When? Who are you calling get man? Look at this idiot. I am even talking, Uncle, you are shouting men, men. The idiot you brought, you said you brought him from wherever. I am sure this idiot here now is not even in Cameroon. They won't accept him. Ghana is going to reduce this idiot that you call, now he's shouting men. You are shouting men, now you brought men. This is men. Wait, you, you, um, men, you call me. Uh -huh. I'm in man. Ghost. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You see, 
is is ranting like Please, a dog. Come and go. Come they go. Come. If you see the calibers of gun where this guy bring, oh. you go push out your leg. Go no go remain for your body. Gosh. He brought so many guns. Yes, come and go. Look, you're supposed to be even apologizing to me. You're supposed to be rendering apologies, showering it on me like rain. Not this idiot. Come and go, yeah, yeah. He brought, he, look, see, you can't even a man. Go. This is not even up to a man. Okay, if you say you're a man, let's do, put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder. Put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder. If we not look for one hand, call me uh, idiot. Come. Yes, put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder. Let us see. Stretch your hand, let us see. You call yourself a man, a full-fledged man. Stretch your hand, let us see. Yeah. I am stretching my own. Um, 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 Put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder, let us see. I, I cannot get this shit from this man. In fact, I, I, yes. I, 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 will, I will shoot this man, man. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will okay. this man, man. It's okay. Oh yeah, come and go. I will not use my phone. Come account. and go. Because. Please. You what the to, fuck want, is wrong with you, man? Leave, man. No. You, you want to fight? Yes. Leave, man, now. You want to fight? Fight him, man. You want to fight? You want to fight? Fight him. Man, you're crazy! Look! Get. If I release I this man, you, man, no. head, you don't have one hand already now, no. I, I will By fight you, man, no. this thing on your head, Fight him, man! What the fuck are you saying, man? man? Come, man! Fight him! Come, man! Man, man come, man! Is I did not touch my temper, man! Man, man! Hey, man. Oh, man, man. Come. Um, from what I heard, it's as if both of you are already married. Yeah, man! <laughs> Father, man! <laughs> But this man told me the, that he have already spent a lot of money on her. What are you going to do about it? Car them! Refund money? Well, um, I go go home first, man. If I reach home, um, I go discuss with my wife. Which wife? Then... Which wife are you going to go home to? Father, did you hear that? Who gave you a wife? What is her father's name? What is her son's name? Who gave you a wife? Who came to Ebon Kude? Which is a claim? Who came to your traditional marriage? Do you know the name of your father? Her father? You're calling her your wife. Father, do you, do you, you hear that? Okay. This is what I've been facing on this boy. I have told him to release my wife to me. He kept calling her his wife. Who married her to you? What is her surname? Who is her father? What is her father's name? You're calling her your wife. If you ever call that girl your wife again, it might be very yeah, before. Okay, okay. It might be very before. Okay. I will chop up your hand. I don't know, buggy man. Ah, man. God, this is one problem I have with this idiot. This is kangaroo. Wait, wait, wait. This is Elia Usa. Wait. This boy is Elia Usa. You have what he said. Wait. Okay, it's okay. Eh? Eh? I, will, I will settle it amicably. Since you told me that Nkole went somewhere, I will summon her to come. Eh? I marry her, man. We wedded man, father, man. I did court marriage many over there in America, man. I signed. She married me. Oh, sorry. Man, I marry her, man. Father. This idiot here now, listen what he said. He said he married her in overseas. You married her in overseas. Every responsible man that gets married to a woman, he takes her to his own home and not to his guest house. For Uncle to have brought you home, that means Uncle married you. She paid your groom price. In fact, she paid your bride price. That was why you followed her home. You are not ashamed of yourself. Every full fledged man marries a wife. Pay her bride price okay, and okay. take her to his own house. Okay. She brought you to, to her own house. Okay. That makes you more okay. useless. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Um, I will settle it amicably. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't fight him again. Yeah. I will settle it. Don't, don't worry. But you people will stop fighting. Please. Fighting is not good. It cannot bring any good news. It's done as quickly as possible. I am so going to continue fighting no, with this idiot. No, no. Ah, I am going to continue fighting it's with you. Fuck you, man. It's okay. I'm telling you. It's okay. It's okay. Fuck you, man. Oh, yeah. It's all right. I will call him, call I will, I will summon him, call So, from her. Eh? It's, it's no problem. Don't worry. Please, promise me that you people will stop fighting. Eh? If you people continue fighting in this village, I will not settle this thing. Father, father. Father, it's okay. It's okay. motherfucker, man. Fuck you up, man. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. Me, fuck you. I said, fuck you. Fuck you. You motherfucker, man. Bro, I don't beat you on the way. You motherfucker. Bro, I don't beat you on the road. I'm telling you. Father, I don't know about you, man. Look, if this boy continues saying men on the way, if this boy continues telling me men on the way, I'm so going to fight him. I'm wait, so going to wait, deal with wait, him. Wait. I'm telling you. Wait, Yaseka. This boy is a stranger in this village. Father, that is no reason why he has to behave. Please, don't fight him again. Why will you come to the village? He doesn't know to champion the villagers. What you want is your wife. Is it not true? Yes! Don't worry. I'll so, please, I'm telling you. Settle it because I will start dealing with you. You're not 
Fuck your mother. Fuck your father, man. I am going to beat you. You I'm beat telling me. you. I got, I, I'm responsible for that. I gotta shoot you, man. You gotta shoot me, man. Can I can walk out, man. One nagging, nagging. Nagging, man. I'm responsible for that. Otherwise, I would have dealt with you now. You will not do anything, Sorry, man. Sorry, no problem. No. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you say, I don't look this thing. I say, ah, say this thing. Time don't reach. I and I mean only miss one. I sit down. Come reason this thing. Reason I reason I say. Time don't reach. What we say. This is our name. What the answer? You the answer and call it. And the answer I say. Say time don't reach. What we say. We go drop this name. Come begin refashion our name. Come reposition our. Come repackage our. Make the name carry a fizzy. Frogsy. Mm -hmm. Make the name they throw away. Mm -hmm. Now we go change them to Mr. and Mrs. I say. Mm, that's great. Because of the love I get for you, to tell you something now. The love I get for you will come up from the innermost part of my heart. From the gutter. That's to tell you how deep it is be from my heart. Now I can go use my last card where I get. Go buy this chicken. I sell it this chicken. You understand? They bring plenty chicken. I see plenty chicken for that place. Now I go sell it this one. Specially. Now I can go where they say drink. I say, if any drink they here where I go take, propose my own, it must be this drink. You understand? Now I can go collect this drink to come to this place now. To use my church mind to tell you, say, Uncle, please, will you marry me? Uh -uh. We take consign a uh, marriage with uh, Fao and Shinap inside this one again. We take consign Fao and Shinap for the proposal. We say, by the time I pour this drink for grand, by the time I pour this drink for grand, God waited for heaven. When Claude they touch grand, but no way of a size, he go witness. Even all the whole um, our shrine, every, all the whole gods, this three, them, everybody. Witness, say me and you, and husband and wife. So now make me go buy this drink and this fowl. Man, doesn't mean you don't want to take me to church anymore. Eh? I look, say, like I tell you, even after church, you call it church where they talk, say, I know one carry you go church. Now, church, they marry you. Now, me waiting for this place, and they marry you, no be church. You understand? So, as I don't come like this now to come tell you, say, see what's in my mind, anything where you talk for this place now. Any place, anything we talk for this place now, go they use against you in the court of those court. You know, sometimes they for heaven get caught. Hmm. So anything we talk for this place now, they will use them against you for God court. Even all the whole courts, waiting for the gods for this land, they will use them against you. So now I can talk, say, Nkole, please, will you marry me? I'll marry you, man. Yeah, I'll marry you, 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 not yeah. me. Yeah, I'll marry you. You will marry me. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah, you see, okay. <coughs> yeah, come, come. Ah! What's this? One love. Ah, stop! Unity. Oh, stop now! You're better for worse. What the fuck? Man, stop it, man! Plenty children. Oh! Boys and girls. Oh! What's better, this? Better love. Better love. Ah! Till they do, death do us apart. Shout, he say. Mm -hmm. He say. Mm -mm. Well, you know what will happen now? Go play music. Yeah. yeah go play music. Go, go, go. Okay. Play music. Yeah. Come on. Play music. I'm so, coming. Ha! <laughs> eh? Sugar, sugar. Sugar, tomato, mo. Eh? Play music, play music, play music. Oh, my God. Ah!
Come, 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 come back here, man. Idiot, man. Stupid, you, man. Fuck you, man. So you don't have to sleep. Eh? So you don't have to sleep. Now, listen. I have come to warn you. Never ever, for one day again, you try to touch me. Sorry, man. If you try it, man. Hey, man. Man. Do you hear me? Do you hear what I just said? I got hot temper. And my mom, you I carry so many weapons come back to this village. I get AK-47, AK-48, AK-46, plus AK-41. Mm-hmm. If I... Oh. Oh. You are you. Man. This can't be the way you beat me. This can't be the way you beat me. I just leave you because... If I handle you, you're not gonna survive him. So you Man! You. Us! Come spoil my dream. My dream. Wedding. On my child wedding, you can't spoil her. You can't spoil my dream. And you get mouth. Come this place. Come they shout. You know the height of the damage we cause? Dream where I don't the dream. My marriage dream. Now you can mind. Come this place. Come spoil for me. And you know the fear. You the time you say you get take it 47. You get all the whole ammunition. Strength. Leave I carry you. Come this place. You know what you go happen? Relax. Sit down. Make I go inside. Come. We go settle this matter now. Here now. Yeah? Just carry seat down. No come out to we go settle and idiot. Now now you know say you go beg me. Fuck you, man! In fact, you are a bullshit man. She like a one walk man. A warrior. You think I I I I I I I I play with you? Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? You came to this place. You had the infantry to come and disturb my dream. Dream that I was dreaming. My wedding dream. You came to this place to come and destroy my dream, and you hide in front of to come and be talking to me anyhow. You told me you came with ammunition, AK-47, AK-58, all the whole ammunitions. You would have stood this place, and I would have chopped up your hand. You already don't have one hand, though. I would have taken off the other one. You had in front to be talking to me anyhow. You spoiled my dream. You, you call yourself Americana, but I'm going to tell you that I'm from Owosa, and nobody can threaten me. What I have in my pocket here, by the time I brandish it on you. You will not have a life to live. You only have one being. Dead human being, you are an imbecile. I would have shot down to you now that you wouldn't have you wouldn't even have mouth to talk. You took my wife away. You took my uncle away. That wasn't enough for you. You came to my dream, my wedding. You came and obstructed my wedding. Second, I forgave you. Now you had your front tree to come to my house in my dream. Where I was sleeping to come and obstruct my sleep. I would have shot down to you now. I would have killed you. And buried you alive with my own. I go to court and answer query. I would have so killed you, useless idiot. You come to my house to come and warn me. Look at you. When human beings come and warn me, you two urchin. Goat, you come to warn me too. Rat, you come to warn me. Useless. Hey. See, dream, why don't you dream now? For my wedding, this boy don't call spoiler. To go back for this dream now, my problem. Let me see what I do. Dream be like network. If you come out, you don't come out. To call him back now, not to. Useless. No worry. We will see. For this place.